Hi everyone, Joe for Jaspi's CaseBreaks.com. Full case break of the brand new 2019 Tops Update Series Baseball. Pick your team number one. So this is Hobby Edition, 12 boxes, PYT1. Michael Tuckley, Last Bot Mojo Tigers. Thank you to him. And thank you to everybody for getting in. Appreciate it. Got a lozenge in my mouth, so I apologize to the viewers. It sounds like I'm breaking with marbles in my mouth. I'm not breaking with a marble in my mouth. Just a throat lozenge. Corey saying, I'm the man. Why? What did I do? Something good, I hope. Holiday poster. So we're looking for one autograph or relic per. It's heavy. curl these with my workout. All right. This is going to pretty much take us to the end of the night, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure if I'm going to be up for doing anything else after this, to be honest with you. Um, there's like a one box break that fills up on the side. I may knock that out at the end, but this will pretty much take us right to the end. Oh, the one of one bell train. Clearly authentic for a little while. That I remember that. And brought back memories of. Why didn't the Dodgers hold on to Adrian Bell train? These are the quote unquote silver packs that are in black, but in the back is silver. All right. Good luck, everybody. Is anyone in this break? TJ's in this break. He's got the tribe. Now, before we started this break, we were talking about John's, everyone remembers John, right? He's famous in the hobby now. The owner of the, the winner of that 50 autograph book. We were, and he's thinking of taking it to Leland's auctions. They've been in conversation. He's just wondering, where do we start it? He doesn't want to go too low. He doesn't want to price it so high that it doesn't sell. I don't know. My my idea is, hey, maybe you can try to lean on lean on their expertise to see what they suggest. Is it better starting it low? Is it better starting it high? So who knows? All right, so Catchy is here got the uh, the Cardinals, unfortunately, he says. Well, not if we pull like a big hit out of there for them. EA's got the Padres. I feel like we have not seen too many. Well, we've seen some Tatis Jr. cards, the base cards, which I know still do okay on the secondary market, but I haven't seen like an autograph. It's all Relic, I think, in the Jumbo case, but. Hey -o. yeah, Logan. You've heard it's the first book that John's ever read. John saying, pretty close, Logan. There will be a hit recap at the end. So it'll be a 12 thing recap. Everything else, just in the interest of time, I'm going to breeze through these just as quickly as possible to keep it from becoming like a three-hour break. But obviously, everything like this will ship. Those are considered inserts, and that's a rookie anyway. You know, all the variations will ship. So obviously, just keep in mind that these uh, update breaks are going to take maybe a few days longer than usual to... Um, to sort out and ship, of course. That's the 2019. So we'll set those aside and we'll sleeve and top load those. 
I'll set a few of these Guerrero Juniors and the other top rookies aside as well. Like uh, Pete Alonzo, Keyboom, Eloy, Tatis. There's Keston as well. All those will all ship. And as it's stated in the uh, item description, in this break, we'll take, uh, once you sort out all the veteran commons, I think our crew is just going to grab 25 cards, just at random, out of those and send those to you too. So you'll, you'll have some extra vet vets as well. These will randomize left and right. Any cards that are like that, we'll set that aside for the randomizer. And obviously these are insert so they'll ship. And I'll try to catch as many of those top rookies as possible just to set those aside. You know, like Pete Alonzo, so they'll get so they'll get sleeved and top loaded before they get out. Oh, I think Rory, I think he's wondering if there's any anything big on the checklist for the Cardinals. I don't know off the top of my head. There's the ICL to 50 for the red legs. That'll be for Jim. Um, Walter bought the Brewers in this. I don't think I've seen Walter's name too often on our in our group breaks. So I think he might be a new guy. For the Mariners, we got Parker Markle and David McKay. Corbin Martin to, to 2019. We were talking before this break about how how much value update continues to hold from season to season. That's encouraging. That's why it is definitely worth you know taking the time to go through you know kind of what what is a long break. It is a long break. There's Tatis Jr., Guerrero Jr. But hey, nothing ventured, nothing gained. The, uh, who's going to be the, the big rookies for next year? I guess there's our relic right there. That's Jose Abreu, White Sox. That'll be for Sam. Oh, right. Jordan Alvarez should have the rookie designation. Kevin Biggio, of course. Gavin, yeah, Gavin Lux, actually. You're right. Gavin Lux should have the rookie designation. The RC designation. For a lot of Topps products. Little more Flores, 2019. 
All right, that was box one. Let's see what's in here. Nice to tease Jr. right there, too, for EA and the Padres. All right, next box. Oh, yeah, Brendan McKay. That should be a great one. Brendan McKay, a two-way player like Otani. I think it would be interesting to see. And he played a little bit in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the majors this year. <coughs> So we might start seeing him really blossom. That would be cool to see another two-way player. And Otani should be fully healthy next season, too. Arcides Ar Aquino. Right. Right. He kind of blew up. He came out of nowhere. He should be in products next year, too. to see what other rookies emerge. That's what's great about sports. There's always like, you're gonna have the few like hyped, hyped up players. And then there's always a handful that just kind of come out of nowhere. I mean, I don't think, I don't think anyone really expected Pete Alonzo to do what he did this season. I remember thinking like Pete Alonzo, who the hell is that? In, this, in, this, in spring training. He's like, oh yeah, he hit a couple bombs here and there. You know, looked him up, kind of kind of was like, okay, you know, may have, may have seen his name in like a Baseball America magazine or something like that, but not much beyond that. Started hitting the dingers in spring training. Started hitting dingers in the regular season. Made the team. Started hitting dingers in the regular season. And you're like, okay. Hot start for the Rook. Started hitting dingers in May. Started hitting dingers in June. July, August, September. So it looks like he's for real. I mean, if he can keep, if he can do this next season too. I mean, I don't think he's gonna hit 50 home runs next year, but if he stays healthy, you know, it's another 30, 35 home runs or something like that. That could be really cool. Mets fans would be very happy about that. All right, box two. What a rough playoff for AJ Pollock. Didn't even start game five. Was 0 for much of the series. I mean, he's a good hitter, but just bad series. Dodgers always seem to run into, like, the hot teams. Like teams of destiny. Astros seemed like they were the team of destiny, like, a couple years ago. Red Sox were just on a hot streak. They beat the Dodgers, and then... National just went on a hot streak and got the Dodgers. See, Corey Seager wasn't really. I think we talked pitching a little bit, the bullpen issues for the Dodgers, but I think the, I think the lack of hitting also is something that was, is, was and is worrisome. Corey Seager wasn't really hitting. Bellinger wasn't really hitting either. AJ Pollock was anonymous. I mean, you can't do it with, can't do it with Kike Hernandez and Jock Peterson. I'm afraid, and Max Muncy. That's not enough. Those are supposed to be your role player guys. Muncy's a little more than that, but you know, you know what I mean. The Angels fans here. It's the boss man, Nick Jaspi. Very happy about the Joe Madden managerial signing. They think it's a sign of good things to come. 
Should be. Could be. Hey, no worries, Rory. I'll see you tomorrow, man. Uh, the Angels just need to rebuild their their pitching staff. Gotta, gotta get that starting rotation in order. Joe Adele. Joe Adele should be a big rookie next year. That's another big name for next year. Joe Adele for the Angels is a fixture in that outfield. Probably play a corner outfield position. That's going to be huge too. Sonny Gray, 67. He had a great season. Is Will Smith going to be a I just flashed by a Will Smith. Is he going to be a rookie next year or is he a rookie this year? I guess he's, a, I guess he's technically a rookie in 2019 stuff. I guess it'll be Gavin Lux. Maybe Dustin May stuff next year? Nice to Tease Jr. Well, let's hear it, folks. Unless your team is still in the playoffs, what, what's your team? Who do you support? And what do you what do you hope they they do in the off season to improve to become a playoff team, if not more? Austin Allen for the Padres. You know, you guys you guys know what what I think about uh, about the Dodgers. It, is it? That I don't know, Trendsetter. I feel like there's so many new releases like this month that I even, haven't even thought about what's coming out next month. See, that I think that key room's a variation. And our hit is Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo relic for the Rangers. Haven't seen an auto yet. Um, how many autos generally fall in these hobby cases in a 12 box hobby? How many will we see? Has anyone seen other full case breaks? Adam, what's going on, Ray? Adam in the house. Another key boom. Some of these can be autographed. We saw an autographed one out of these packs before as well. All right, next box. comments on their baseball teams. We've got, let's see, we go, let's go to the AL East, Boston. What happened with the Red Sox? Just going through the standings here. What happened with the Red Sox? Red Sox beat my Dodgers last year, and I was like, all right, well, okay. It happens. Not happy about it, but what are you going to do? And then they started off the season slow. Chris Sale had a weird injury, and I was like, okay. World Series hangover, been there. And they just never got into gear throughout the season. You know, when like one person's, I, I feel like everyone was slumping at the wrong time. You, you guys weren't getting, you know, weren't heating up together. You know, didn't quite work out. 
I wonder what they do. They've got some big off-season questions. You blow it up? Do you do you trade Mookie Betts? He's like what a he's another another year or kind of in a good trade win trade zone before he hits free agency. Do you trade him get pieces there? Chris Sale contract kind of hamstrings the team. JD Martinez could opt out of that contract. They've got a couple young guys locked up, right? Did they I think they locked up Xander Bogarts? Jackie Bradley Jr. maybe is locked up. They got some they got some key pieces. Key young pieces kind of locked up, but they gotta figure it out. Maybe a quick teardown. Trade assets, get assets, and then just add in free agency. And then wait for the young guys to come up and dovetail in with that free agency acquisition. All right, next box. Yeah, speaking of Mookie Betts, there he is, 37 out of 50. What about the Rays? What do the Rays do? The Rays are always going to suffer from being in a small market and not having, you know, that sort of... They got to move stadiums. That's their big off-season move. Move stadiums, rebuild, build a new stadium, build it closer to where everybody is, get a new stadium, get butts in the door, and then start getting some of that TV money and that stadium money, new ballpark money, start spending a little bit in free agency. What they can do, you know, what the Rays can do with their farm system, they're undoubted, undoubtedly excellent, you know, but if they can get brand new ballpark, attract a couple of free agents here and there, maybe allow them to trade some of their youngsters for other big players here and there, and then next thing you know, bam, I mean, that, that could be a World Series team right there with a couple extra pieces, with just a little extra cash, you know? Pacific Power, 2019, Pete Alonzo. Nice, Aaron's saying that Immaculate in November. Nice, that should be pretty big too. I think Toronto Blue Jays are in good shape. They've got a lot of young, exciting talent. You know, they, they, just, they just put pieces together. Add a little pitching here and there. I, I, I don't think they'll be afraid to spend a little bit of money once they've got the youngsters kind of, that core of youngsters settled in. You got Bo Bichette, Kevin Biggio, Vlad Guerrero Jr. You got, got those guys in the mix. There may be a couple hitters, a couple starters away, bullpen away from making things happen. I don't know how they're going to threaten the Yankees there, but they could give it a shot. Give it a good run. I think they traded a bunch of guys. Like, and I think that was smart because I think they're, they're getting the timing correct. They traded like Daniel Hudson, they traded uh, Marcus Stroman, et cetera, et cetera. I think that was a good call because they're counting on all their youngsters. There's another relic right here, Jeff McNeil. No auto yet. And so that way all these young players kind of grow together and they build a, build a really nice core. Boys do. This is a big factor in the uneven dropout rate for girls in sports. And as we 
And that could be... That could be a big turning point for the Blue Jays. Orioles? Keep, keep, keep growing, Orioles. They just need to keep farming. Keep farming. That's what they got to do. Twins, hey, we're moving on to the ALS and twins. What are the twins gonna do? Twins have to. Their hitting is good. We know that they can hit some dingers, but the twins—they've got to add some pitching behind Jose Barrios. Maybe trade some of that hitting, get some pitching on board, and try to splash some money on a free agent pitcher, I suppose. But it's AJ Pollock for the Dodgers, 2019. Indians had a weird season. I think they got to start. They should start selling off some pieces. There's someone here. Who was it? Cody West. Someone was saying that that they thought that Francisco Lindor would be a good trade candidate. Why not just move everybody, start start rebuilding, replenish that farm system. There's Keyboom and there's Trevor Bauer, Reds edition. Nice four out of 99. All right, next box. White Sox, I think they're going to be great in a few years. They've got a lot of young players, Eloy, especially. Some other guys, Lucas Giolito, really coming into his own. They've got Carson Fulmer and Carlos Rodon and Michael Kopech, and they've got some arms. I think they're going to start surprising teams. Man, if we had, if we put like White Sox future pitching with Minnesota twin hitting, that'd be pretty great. Royals are rebuilding. Tigers are rebuilding. It will be a little while before we'll see Royals and Tigers back. But Tigers especially have an interesting piece in Casey Mize. Number one overall pick who everyone seems to say pitching wise is like the real deal. Honestly, baseball is weird. It's not like basketball or football where you can say like, oh yeah, that guy's going to project to be a pro. Baseball is odd, but... So far, so good for Casey Mize. He could be in that rotation. Maybe some starts next year. They don't have to rush him. There's no need. But maybe have, they can show up some spot starts next year and then really buy for a rotation spot in a couple years. That'd be great. It'd be good for the hobby. And a big number one prospect to, to build, that, build a rotation around him. West, you know, we know what the Astros can do. A's, they need a new state. They need to get that new stadium, get that stadium money, start investing in that team. Rangers rebuilding. Angels also rebuilding. They got to add some pieces. Mariners have some good young pieces. They could be exciting. More, it's going to try to save as many of these Tatis Juniors here so the team can spot those and take care of those right away. Same with that Vlad Guerrero Jr. There you go, Yankees. Look at that one, CeCe Sabathia. CeCe Sabathia, first ballot Hall of Famer? I think so. Maybe with that 3,000 Ks, that kind of puts them right there. First ballot, Arab. 
definitely one of the among the first ballots, first few ballots of his career, I would say, or of his Hall of Fame eligibility. That's cool. They just toss the stadium club. No one riding. That's pretty neat. Iconic card. That is an iconic card. Classic pose there. And we've got a medallion for the Orioles. Jim Morin gets Frank Robinson. Nice one, Jim. I think he still stands as the only player to win an AL MVP with the Orioles, I think, and a NL MVP, I'm pretty sure, with the Reds. First black manager, too, I think, in base, Major League Baseball and the pros. Trent Thornton, 2019. Pete Alonzo. J.P. Crawford Black, 67. That's for the Mariners. That'll be for Aaron. Max Money, twenty nine. Max Muncy, twenty nineteen. Max Muncy had a good playoff. Dodgers. All right, let's see what we got in here. Nice, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Byron Buxton. Let's find an autograph. I've been through like it's our fourth box, fifth box right now. No auto yet. I don't know how many. I know it says one auto or relic per box, but anyone have any idea how many fall on a per case basis? I would hope like four or five.
We got D'Angelo Russell as a Warrior. I'm watching the Warriors Lakers game here. We're, we're entering an excellent time of sports where we've got playoff baseball, which I can now watch stress free. Playoff baseball. We got hoops coming up. Hockey is still it's just got underway. English Premier League season underway. We've got NASCAR, Chase for the Cup going on. Fifth box. And another relic. We want autos. More, we want more ink. People want ink. This is Aroldis Chapman for the Yankees. Bob Myhill with that one. Jackie Robinson. Alonso is going to be your NL Rookie of the Year, right? I can't see that going any other way. Maybe if Tatis Jr. wasn't up and down with injuries, I think he would have had a shout for that NL Rookie of the Year, but I think health counts, him playing the entire season counts. I think uh, Pete Alonso breaking the Major League Baseball rookie home run record, beating Aaron Judge. I think that'll count for a lot for the voters. Diaz, 
Robert Tatis Jr., Guerrero Jr. They seem to follow each other, those two guys in these packs. Nice. Pete Alonzo, home run derby out of 2019. So Mets, Robert Maia will be getting all of those, including the ones that I may have passed by. Loves this, uh, this Rudy, this Rudy KFC commercial. It still cracks me up. I like how Sean Aston is just like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I will do it. And I think in one of the first Rudy commercials that they did, the actual, actual Rudy <laughs> was uh, like played his dad in the commercial. They really, really, a lot of attention to detail there. Box six. We'll be halfway through this break after this one. Then will be about another 45 minutes to go. All relics, Ron, Don, Don Rev. And I see another relic right there. So no autos yet. I have no idea how many autos are supposed to fall per case, but seems like none as of yet. I'll be pretty bummed if we do a two-hour break and, and not see an autograph. I mean, it says on autograph or relic, so... That's what they say. And 
Hoffman. There's another relic. It's a cool one, though. Carlos Correa, Astros. It's going to go to John McCall. I haven't seen too many Eloys. We'll save those. It's Kurt Caselli, 71 out of 76. Brandon Kinsler for the Cubs 2019. That'll be for Peter. And there's Peter Alonzo. All right. Whew. Running out of steam. And there's some gold back here. Nice. Griffin Canning, gold, mojo, refractor, 45 out of 50 for the Angels. Nice. Halos. That will be Walter. All right, folks. we got six boxes to go right here. Three there, three there. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to come back. We'll get the second half started. Halftime show. Be right back. All right, welcome back, folks. Took a quick little five. I'm cleaned off my area here. Now, got another about 45 minutes to go in this break. It should take us actually a little bit over to the end of the night. This is our last break of the night, so I know most people have have said good night, and they'll be we'll be back tomorrow, two o'clock Pacific. 5 o'clock Eastern Time, and that will be, we'll start doing some more of this, hopefully with, uh, with Nick's help. I think tomorrow I'm going to have to start setting some earlier deadlines on these, so if you like the update, and I know there's a lot of great value in update, but these are kind of grueling, buy early and often, and let's try to get these knocked out earlier in the day. Instead of at the end of the night when I'm definitely running out of steam. Robert, you can't wait for prison basketball in December. Nor I. I think this should be pretty good. Prism Draft Picks basketball available right now on jazbeescasebreaks.com on our website. But yeah, the one where everyone's in their pro uniform should be pretty cool. I'm watching a little preseason basketball right now, actually. Rex is here. It is a magnet actually being released on Friday? Sure. I won't believe it until I see the UPS and the FedEx guy drop off big cases of immaculate basketball at our, at our shop. But at this point, it's, it's really too close. I mean, if they push it, and it's like two days away and they push it, a day away and they push it, I'll be very sad. I think I'll just... I don't know. I don't know what we'll do. Bowman draft should be really good. Bowman draft will be like this. It'll be like this, but but I'm hoping by the time Bowman draft rolls around, maybe that we'll have some uh, maybe we'll have some child labor, some small hands that can open up these packs and stack them up for me go through the cards for me, and I just have to announce what's happening. <laughs> I think Al Hoffman is a big loss for the Celtics and a huge gain 
I think it has been. It's one of the it's one of the most pushback products. Robert, are you a, are you a capper? You're the only capper in America that will tell you the truth. The real capper never makes bets every day. But they tell people they do, right? So, which are touts. No one likes a tout. Unless you're a tout, then you like touts. Another relic. Where, when are we going to find an autograph? So uh, what's your sport of expertise, Robert? We're always, look, we're always looking for tips here and there. Ooh, new Skywalker trailer next Monday? Looking forward to that. Is this the double header? No, I don't think that's sold out yet. If you look on the site, there should be some spots left. This is uh, Hobby 1. Stay away from baseball, Robert? That's all I bet. That's where you're, that's where you're wrong, Robert. You gotta, you gotta go dog heavy in baseball to succeed. You gotta find the edge there. I never lay more than a hundred and minus 150 on that, and I always bet dogs, mostly. And football is too sharp. NFL is hard. They're way too sharp. But I think I'm 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 far from a professional at that kind of thing, at the the inner the wagering for entertainment purposes. But but if you're if you've got like like proper like numbers and models and stuff like that, baseball is really is really one of the better ways to go. There's so much value. There's just too many games for for, the, for Vegas to really set lines properly. Um, that makes it very difficult for them to get everything right. And a lot of times, line movements are based off of like public opinion, and you can kind of generally fade the public and whatnot and go from there. Football's tough. NFL is tough. Yeah, NBA is not too bad. You you can find some. Uh, you can find some some edge in the NBA, that is for sure. Same with hockey, soccer as well. If you're into the Premier League like I am, you can find a little edge there. Football is tough. If you're like a pro, like football, better. You got to be really sharp. Um, whoa! Did Jason just pull a Fernando Tatis Jr. medallion autograph? Woo! He's doing one of these breaks too. On the on the other channel. The real sharps, I think, if you want to make pro money, is uh, from what I hear, from the guys in the desert, college sports, college basketball, and college uh, college basketball and college football. Can really get a big edge there. Rex saying, anyone know if the Oh, I have the DraftKings app, Rex, but just for the just for the game, not for not for uh, wagering, which Indiana has now. But I don't know how the how the wagering app looks, what it looks like.
All right, next box. Corey saying, if it's Astros Washington, you're thinking, you're thinking ride the under the whole series. I mean, but I don't know. That that that'll be interesting to see how that how that turns. I'm terrible with totals, so I never I never play those. But I feel like that's like the that's like the narrative. But watch, it'll just be like bats, bats, bats. Yeah, I think they're probably saving Jordan Alvarez, Robert, for for next year. They do that every once in a while. I think Schwar Kyle Schwarber and Chris Bryant came up at the same time, but they they saved Schwarber for the following season. I think. Adam, you're sad that the Red Sox are most likely shopping Mookie Betts. You know who's not sad? The Angels fans here. What would it take to get Mookie Betts? I feel like I, I feel like you'd have to move so much, like. I guess he's a little bit older than 27, but still, that's another... 27, that's another, what, five years, five seasons of elite play? First major league player in history to win MVP. A silver slugger, a gold glove, a batting title, and the World Series in the same season. Like the, uh, I wonder what, what would you want from the Dodgers, Adam? I'll give you, I'll give you Gavin Lux, Alex Verdugo, and and Kiebert Ruiz, a catching prospect in the minors, for. Milky bets. Oh, you want Jock and two prospects? I I do that in a heartbeat. I do that in a heartbeat. Jock Peterson, Gavin Lux, Alex Verdugo equals Milky bets. Done. Yeah, Kopech should be really good next year. Yeah, the um, the Angels fans here, Bossman, Nick Jaspi, Rex are pretty pretty excited about Joe Madden, JJ Pollock, seventy six. Is Bleacher Report basing that off of actual like buzz from their sources, or is that are they just speculating? Are they just editorializing? I think, I think the, I think the Angels are, Angels fans are happy here. I think they, they want to go for Garrett Cole, maybe. You know, or maybe go for Mookie Betts, move some prospects for Mookie. But I don't know. Red Sox would definitely want Joe Adele, though. Oh, there's your relic, sorry. Mike Mussina. Orioles. No auto. Maybe the rest of these boxes are going to be autos. That's out of 150. Orioles. Jim Morin.
Do you think the Cubs are going to go after Rendon and sell Chris Bryant? Rendon makes me nervous because I think people forget all the all the nagging injuries he's had to battle over the years. Do you want to pay money for that? At that point, I'd rather stick with healthy Chris Bryant than expensive and unhealthy Anthony Rendon. I've heard some speculation that the Dodgers would go for Rendon as well and kind of kind of like extend and preserve Justin Turner's career, but Here's Matt Beatty. Dan says, you want Chris Bryant on the Yankees? Don't you have enough hitters? The Yankees need pitching. Move some of those. Like, you got Miguel Andujar, who should be back next season. You got Urshela. There's too many bats there. Chris Bryant's younger, though, than Rendon. Which is why I would just gamble with Chris Bryant long term. Never enough hitting, I suppose. So you can, I suppose, you can just out hit the opponents when you know Paxton only goes a few innings, and when Severino only goes in a couple innings. Uh, it's it's I mean Cole smokes everybody, Dan. So I think that's like that's a tough one. But the starting pitching didn't do the Yankees any favors. Because the Astros bullpen could be got. Josh Donaldson, it's 2019 for the Braves. Freaking Joe Kelly. <laughs> This is true, Dan. I mean, the the total total respect for the bullpen. That's that's for sure. But I think you know, from an outside observer out here in LA, you know that bullpen's so good. Imagine if if we you guys didn't have to go to them so early. Otani, Ichiro, Estrada, and you got JD Martinez. Nice to 150. This box right here. Robert, you're saying Freeman, another another player every year, top five. Well, no value according to who? I think I think anyone who follows baseball knows Freddie Freeman. Tons of value there. Or if you're talking about the hobby, oh. Yeah, that I agree. I'm sure his rookie cards still do still do just fine. I'll bet he's strong in local markets in Georgia, southern markets. Like local card shops probably still do well selling his stuff. Maybe nationally. Maybe nationally it's not as 
as big of a thing, but I mean, we're not carrying. When when was Freddie Freeman a rookie? We're not carrying a lot of that product from like eight nine years ago. So, and it's probably too expensive to get because of guys like Freddie Freeman. To get like Bowman Draft from that from that time. What are you saying, Jason? Oh, I saw what Rex just said. I'm surprised. Rex was saying, I'm surprised Madden took the Angel deal so fast. You expect him to shop around for a few months. Nope. You want to go to cold New York for the Mets job? You want to want to go to cold Philadelphia for the Phillies job? You want to go to cold, freezing San Francisco for the Giants job? You want cold Kansas City for the Royals job? Or do you want to live next to the Real Housewives of Orange County and hang out at Newport Beach every day in the summer? Buys a house in Newport, goes surfing at the beach. That sounds like Joe Madden life right there. That's what I thought too, Dan. We were talking about this last night. Dan Kay is saying they were pretty cold to him in Chicago after they after he brought them the World Series. I thought they turned on him. I thought they turned on him pretty quickly. Well, he took cold Chicago because cold Chicago gave him the money after he's like, I'm leaving Tampa Bay. I'm not an old man. I'm not a retiree in Tampa Bay. Sorry, Tampa Bay people. Uh, and then once the Cubs didn't like him anymore, and the fans turned on him kind of quick. It was cold-blooded. If someone told me in 2016 that in a few years that they'd be talking about trading Chris Bryan and that Joe Madden would be out of a job, I'd be like, that's crazy talk. In 2016, I would have said, you're insane. I'd be like, I'd be like Cubs probably, like, probably have gone to another World Series or two by within three or four years since they won it and probably won another one too but I don't know Cubs fans got greedy I feel like they were like where's that dynasty <laughs> where's that where's that dynasty we we're talking about I think they should have gave it a little more time Well, you're 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 in Bob's boat, Robert. Bob Wessel was saying earlier he's he's sick of the Yankees when they finally flop and need to rebuild. I'll be ecstatic. Well, here's the th here's the here's the dirty secret though. The Yankees have been rebuilding, <laughs> and this is the product of the rebuild. I mean, the last big contract they give out gave out was Paxton, right? So the unfortunate, like the scary thing is this is their rebuild. Their rebuild is taking them to game four of the ALCS. They've traded away, they've traded so wisely. They've brought in a lot of prospects. They've promoted a lot of youngsters. Like, so, but this time, Corey's saying Yankees reload, never rebuild. But they've, they, but they've been rebuilding though. They've kind of done it. They've shaved a lot of payroll. So it's not like it's not old like old eighties, nineties Steinbrenner kind of spending. Not like not like it's, it's very different. Sorry, Josh Naylor. Apologies. You've seen where Epstein didn't like Madden several years because he had too much. Oh, I see. So Theo is like, hey, I'm the guy crunching the numbers here. 
These are the lineups that I want, Joe. These are the pitchers I want showing up in these situations, Joe. And Joe Madden was like, no way, kid. And probably called him kid. And Theo Epstein's like, hey, I'm not a kid. I built two World Series teams in two cities thirsty for, for World Series. Get out of here, Joe. And Joe Madden was like, all right. Well, fire me. Epstein was like, no way I'm firing you. You're going to resign. It's like high school drama. You know, you're gonna, I'm not going to fire you. You're going to resign. It's like, I'm not going to resign. You're just going to let my contract run out. Fine. Fine. That's another relic, by the way. We haven't seen an auto. Those three boxes better have autos in there. Right? I know I've been kind of breezing through these. I'm pretty exhausted, but that's Charlie Morton for the Rays, by the way. Corey with that one. No autos. Not a one. It's ridiculous. Are you saying these cases only have a few autos per case? Thanks, Dan. We've been doing this for for about five years now, so we're able to make we're able to make boring breaks pretty fun. I mean, we're we're like a sports talk radio show here. I feel like my takes are just as good as I don't know Will Kane. Sorry, Eric. Uh, I, I, I blame the, the person who chose the case. I'm passing the buck. I'm blaming Jason for picking that case. Another Charlie Morton, by the way, for the Raves. All right. <laughs> you can cover your bases, EA. All right, three boxes to go. We're almost there. We've got about another, oh, 15, 20, 30 minutes or so. I have no idea. We'll be done soon. Um, you were underwhelmed by update this year. The Jumbo seemed really nice, but I think that's because we're assured autos in Jumbo. I know the hobby has a lot of different parallels in here, but I'm just like, where are the autographs? I've been through nine boxes here. There's 10, 11, and 12 right here. We've not seen an autograph yet. Robert, you're saying take Jets plus ten? Come on, everyone knows that. Give us, give us something better. Give us a better pick. That's easy. Divisional dog playing at home, getting ten double digits against the Patriots team that is bound for a soft performance at some point. Come on, gotta give us something better than that, Robert. We're not pros, but we're not squares either.
Have I pulled any short prints? Dan's asking. I'm sure I have. <laughs> but in the efforts to not make this a two hour break, Dan, I've been kind of moving a little fast. Our sorting and shipping team here at the shop will be able to spot those. I've been trying to pull as many of the bigger rookie names as possible. I think we've got a, got a lot, but but I'm sure they're short prints that I've missed. Usually they're like, I don't know, they're, they're kind of easy. To, some of them are just the different names right here. Some of them are them getting water on them. Because usually most of the cards are, they're able to spot them somewhat easily because usually most of the cards are like almost portrait shots, right? Of them either in the action of throwing or hitting. And then the variation, the image variation at the very least, tends to be them celebrating or in a group or something like that. That's different. That's not an individual player, but you know what I mean. Like that, that would be some sort of image variation. Okay, so Robert's coming back with a with a better pick for us. So he's saying he's saying Giants. Giants team total over on the Giants team total. What's the team total? Well, Robert, as a as a one-time Super Contest loser, and as a one-time probably Circa Millions contest loser this year, I feel like I know enough, and I do okay. Put pizza money on a few things here and there. Another relic. Dang, don't. Did we get the non-auto cases? Yeah, I was like... Well, Nick and I split it last year. We're splitting Circa Millions this year, too. It's actually not that... It's actually not that pricey if you think about it. It's like divided by the amount that you would probably spend every week <laughs> on, on on a little on a little fun here and there, and it's you realize it's like not that much. It's hard though. We, I think we missed cashing by probably by like six seven points. Which is a which is, doesn't sound like a lot, but it's like six or seven games that we could have won throughout the season. But there's so many people in the contest that we were like 500 spots away. Just with that, the margins are so thin. Well, yeah, so I better win then, Marcus. Right? I usually I usually just tease the picks that we take. Which has been a, which has been somewhat profitable, like six six and a half point. That usually is okay. Discover automatically matches all the cash back you earn at the end of your first year, dollar for dollar. Millions of people. Our circuit contest entry. Is Jaspi? I just want to look at where we are each week. If you're into that sort of thing, we had we had a bad couple weeks. I don't think we're cashing this year. Don't think we're cashing this year. But do it again next year. All all we need to do is just win the million once, and it'll all be worth it. It'll all be worth it. Just get the million dollar once. So 
One time. That's out of 76. The hard part, though, is uh, the hard part, though, is you have to pick five games. So you have to find five games, A, that you like, and then and then get those right. Like, and you have to do that at like a 65 to 75 percent clip to even have a shot at money. Usually, someone just lucks out and goes off on a 75 percent clip and. And then they win the million dollars, right? So it's nearly impossible, um, unless you just go on a hot streak. But you can't win if you don't play, right? So that's why we do it. Hopefully, we get on a lucky hot streak. Now, if you picked all like ten games a week, you know, ten, twelve games a, a, a week, you know, most people will will probably, if you're good at football, you, you'll probably get like 60% of the picks, but your margin of error is so much bigger because you get, if you're picking the whole card, if you pick the whole slate uh, of games, like if you play like Yahoo Pick'em or something like that, you play all the games, yeah, you're going to look pretty good. But it's hard we have to break it down into the five games. That's the tough part because then you're like, well, we like that game too and, you know, and then why didn't we pick it and we thought we'd like that game over that game and that's where the... That's where the frustration starts to happen. But Robert, you went to Target, got 50 packs of retail last year, and got only two autos? Yeah, it happens. It's, it's tough. Right, and then if you're, if, you, if you're even in striking distance of cashing in that contest, Marcus, you're right. You gotta, you gotta start playing oppo picks. And you, then you have to start to guess, well, what's the public pick going to be? And then you try to do that and go oppo that public pick. But then you want to score points too. So maybe you want to avoid the, the, the biggest game you think. I don't know. Then, then it gets tricky. I haven't, I've not been lucky enough to be in that position yet. All right, second to last box. Shannon Baker. Hello, Shannon. Hey, I bought two boxes of last year's series to Walmart tonight. I pulled a Father's Day Blue Pete Alonzo. Out of 50, can you help price? I saw a gold for like 50 and up. Um, well, I, there should be some of that on eBay, Shannon. If you take a look on the secondary market, there's got to be examples of that. If you maybe look under completed items or something like that. I'm sure it'll do well, though. On a secondary market, it's pretty, pretty strong. So then you should be able to triangulate, sort of price point, on what that Father's Day one could go for. But that's not like a super rare one, and out of fifty. But um, so I feel like there should be at least one or two examples in the last few months. Marcus, so Marcus, should I have like a 1-800 line that you guys can call? Like those radio commercials you hear on like sports talk radio? Hey guys, Joe the Capper here. I've gone 7, 1, and 2 in my last 10 picks. And I've got this week's best Big Hit Express pick of the week. Woo woo! Just call 1-888-888-PICKS. And for just a dollar a minute, you'll get my recorded message of my favorite picks this week. My locks of the week. Get the locks of the week. I'll give you college, NBA, and NFL. And for just three ninety nine a minute, locks of the week. Total scams, I feel like. 
I feel like half the time you call in, it'll be one pick, and the other half will be the other pick. Right, I have to write Rex. I have to say the phone number a dozen times. That's 888 Jaspi Pigs. 888 Jaspi Pigs and 888 Jaspi Pigs.com. Get my locks of the week. Uh, 2019, Andrew Miller. The locks of the week. I'll give you my first lock for free. My first lock best bets at 1 888 Jaspi Pigs. Is a record 12 and 1 on the season. Call now for my locks of the week. Uh, 2019, Pedro Severino. Father's Day cards are going up for 250 and up? Non-autoed Father's Day card? That sounds a little high to me. But... It is Pete Alonzo, yeah. And yeah, you should probably... I think Dan's right. Maybe wait until he officially wins the NL Rookie of the Year. They may be a bit of a boost there, too. Do, we don't do self promotion here, Robert. Then we're not a. What are we, a community bulletin board? No. You have to pay us for that advertising. Come on, another relic? Are there no autos in this case? If I do a two hour break and there's no autos in this. There's no locks of the week. That's all scams. No kidding, Robert. That's the whole joke. That's the whole joke, man. That's my. That's the whole joke that I'm trying to trying to make. That there are no locks of the week. I guess it is a PS PSA 10s 400 as well. Man, undervaluing that Alonzo market. Well, that's hashtag good for the hobby. He's kind of came out of nowhere. In a sense. As opposed to, like, relative to Vlad Guerrero Jr. and Tatis Jr. Uh, 2019. Logan has a lock. Packers beating the Raiders a lock. Taking Raiders money line all the way. <laughs> Putting the Jaspi store rent on that. It'll make a lot, lot more rent money. Don't play with your heart, folks. Play, play with the wallet.
And we got John Duplantier Alex Caruso. to 199. Handles the <laughs> no, Jason, I, I actually don't play the Dodgers that much. It's actually, it's actually more profitable to go against the Dodgers. I probably 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 made money betting the Dodgers against the Dodgers. Football though, football I get, I get, I fool myself into taking like the Raiders. It's like yeah, they can do that. And plus eight, yeah. You can take the Raiders. Tell me they can't do that. All right, last box. I have no idea, Peter. I don't remember. I've done this for an hour and a half now, but I am going to do a hit recap at the end. So we'll see. Cold Super Bowl without luck? It's actually not that bad. I'm sure there's some good value in that futures pick. Is it worth grading in my opinion? Yes, it is. Like for example, all the, the, the base Pete Alonzos and stuff that we're pulling out of here, the Vlad Juniors and the Eloys and the Fernandos and whatnot. Eventually, after a lot of people start breaking open some more update, there's going to be a lot more of that out on the market. So eventually, if you get some graded, and then you can separate your your card from the rest of the market, then that's an advantage value-wise. If everyone's just selling base Pete Alonzo's, and you've got the one that PSA'd at 10, right, 9 or 10, that's pretty good. You're the one with that one. So I think for... For uh, for like the the higher end rookies, yeah, I think I think it's worth grading it. It's a bit of a process, but I don't know. It's, I I would imagine. I mean, I haven't graded it something in a long time, but it's a process that you might might as well learn and give it a shot. The, I forget the cost. It's not as much as you think it is. Um, I think the cost usually varies depending on how quickly you want to get it back. That's that's the rub. Like I think if you're just like standard delivery or whatever, like twenty bucks to grade a card, but you gotta wait for a few months or something like that, you know. But if you want it graded quickly and back the next week or something, then it's, then the price starts to jump up forty, fifty bucks, something like that, depending on where you live. So. We'll sell what before the next season, Bob? Oh, the Alonzos? Yeah. That's a general rule of thumb. Unless, unless you're... Well, it's like the stock market, you know what I mean? Unless you think it's worth holding for the rest of his career. But either sell soon or hold forever. All right, last one. I, I'm somewhat disappointed that we have not seen an auto here. I haven't missed anything, right? No, I wouldn't have missed an autograph. They're pretty obvious. It's one relic, or there's a plate right there. So that's a train whistle out of fives and under, but I hope I didn't miss any. But every box had a thing in it. So. All right. There's Dan Vogelbach for the Mariners. Aaron, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo! Check. Heck yeah. Vince Paul. He 
turn around like he either knew he made it or he knew he was going to break the backboard. I love the whole bit. In the third quarter, Trey Young. Poor Kershaw, 2019. From anywhere. Fourth quarter, Hawks down by one. Vince again. Besides the home run king book, what's your best pull? That. You think we? I don't. I don't think any other hit comes close to that. Although we did pull a one of one Zion patch auto the other day, out of um, whatever that first off the line immaculate collegiate, I think it was, with the Duke logo. That was pretty cool. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time, so we pulled. We've been doing this for like what five years now, so we've been lucky enough to pull a lot of amazing things. Year to year, month to month, week to week, night to night. Week seven set to get underway in Denver Thursday night. Chiefs have lost a couple in a row. It's an interesting spot there. Meantime, in the National Football League. Robert saying, "What? Start getting rid of your Vlad Juniors? He's fat and over oversized. Harsh. Just fat shaming Vlad Guerrero Jr. The beauty of baseball is you can be any size and play. You can be tiny, tiny Jose Altuve. You can be giant Aaron Judge. You can be fat Vlad Guerrero Jr." Can still play the game. Um, Babe Ruth was fat. I think you want guys with some swag, some personality, different things like that. Uh, and as long as those guys love football, they love competing every single day. I think usually uh, this is a building that, that I think will suit him well. It's always good. Uh, like he's got a dog. A Christian dog. Walker, 219, 2019. Uh, nothing ever really surprised me anymore. Um, you know, especially um, from the business side of things, um, I found out kind of like everybody else did. Obviously, anybody, you can ask anybody in the locker room, we'd much rather play with them than not have them here. So, um, yeah, but that was, I guess that was the situation between him and uh, obviously the front office that just needed to be resolved. Back in 2016, the Rams began a rebuild when they took Jared Goff with the number one overall pick in the draft. They've not taken a single first-round pick since. Trading selections away to the Titans, Patriots, and Falcons along the way. And now after the Ramsey trade, the Rams won't make a first-round pick until 2022 unless they were to trade back in somewhere down the road. Speaking of number one overall, we're looking out west. Some teams over-unders and win totals, including Stanton Steve Pell, who got the number one pick in the draft. And Coach Melrose is here. Oh. We're going to focus on the West. Sonny Morano. <laughs> we're going to focus on the West. And given the fact that you're sitting next to a Caps apologist, and they. No of autograph. A bit of a surprise, but the West is in the entire case, there's Marcel Ozuna. Major League material. That's rough times. I don't know how plentiful autos are supposed to be in, in hobby editions, but I thought we'd see at least one. All right. Yeah, that, that's definitely a boo for me too, EA. Unless there's an autograph in here. There's Eloy, John, Corbin Martin, and nope, Randy. Goes to the Diamondbacks, nice, but. All right, well, here's your hit recap. All right, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. It's one hit per box. It's a little disappointing, but there's your break, ladies and gentlemen. No, no ding. How's your break, ladies and gentlemen? <coughs> All right, well, tomorrow will be a better day. Let's do a quick left-right randomizer here. Left, right. Let's roll it and randomize it seven times, six and a one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a one. Seven to the final count. Right side, we'll get those. So all the right side teams for these type of combo cards will go to the right side. Thanks for watching, everybody. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.